Hey you, don't watch that, watch this. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this barrel shaped pot using eucalyptus, milliput and clear resin. It's very experimental, but I hope you enjoy it. I start by mounting this very old and very dry eucalyptus log between centres. Well, it's very wonky. And I'm using a spindle roughing gouge here to uh, remove the bark and get it to round. This is my Robert Sorby spindle roughing gouge. It is very, very dusty work. This wood is um, not very nice to work really took quite a bit of time roughing it down there's lots of internal checks and splits and the very interlocked grain I'm just using a Robert Sorby parting tool here to square off the ends I'll uh, use a saw to get rid of those um, sort of tapered bits on the end here I'm uh, creating a tenon so it'll fit into my uh, Patriot chuck just checking the diameter adjusting it a bit and then using the, my skew just to create a dovetail using the skew as a negative rake scraper and I've put it into the Patriot chuck now and just use my spindle roughing gouge to bring it well getting it to diameter got my tool rest parallel to the bedways of the lathe and that makes it a lot easier to get a nice um, cylinder of even diameter. Just checking the diameter. Just checking this plastic sleeve fits. This is all part of the project. Marking out the design. And uh, this is a one of the few projects that, that I do that actually evolved as it carried on really uh, the design gradually changed in my head usually I have uh, a design idea and that's how it comes out here I'm uh, just marking out the design with the parting tool using it as a scraper to start with just to define the margins and get a nice clean entry cut and then as I've defined the recesses I uh, lift the tool and do a more conventional planing cut to take it down to depth. Just working my way along. Got some quite nice shavings coming off at times. But it was quite tricky because of the internal checks. I was on the job getting some smooth cuts. But that's it. All done. I'm back in from my very cold workshop and I brought this in and uh, well I've cut the grooves for my inlay work I did that using a parting tool um, but it exposed quite a few internal cracks and checking which could be a problem um, you'll see that the the deeper grooves at the top and the bottom because the finished item is going to have a curved shape so I've got to allow for that but I'm going to have to do another stage on this I'm gonna to have to um, try and seal these cracks or they're gonna cause me problems and it's gonna to fall to bits I think at the next level I'm tempted to scrap it and start again but it is an experimental piece and I don't want to waste a really expensive bit of wood doing it and this is the last really suitable dry log of anything I've got I've got some other lovely hardwoods and things, but I don't really want to use one of those. Um, so I think I'll persevere with this, but I'm going to add another stage. I'm going to use some of the resin I used in my last video, the um, Clear Top 5 from MBFG, because it's very, very runny resin. And I'm actually going to paint all these surfaces to seal some of these cracks, hopefully, and just give it a bit of strength, and it'll also help bond the milliput in there because it's going to be a full thickness inlay I'm going to be hollowing this well that's the plan <laughs> who knows um, and hopefully it might just stop it flying to pieces so I'm going to do an extra stage just paint these with um, some epoxy resin 
but yeah it's uh it's a shame about the cracks i thought i would be able to turn them out but there's rather a lot of them and they're quite big ones if i had a vacuum chamber and a vacuum pump and a pressure pot this would be a prime candidate for fixing this because you could actually impregnate this with resin to fill in all the cracks um but i haven't as yet but it's on my wish list but yeah it is something i am planning to get into I'm using my MBFG Clear Top 5 epoxy resin for this bit. I'll leave details in the description. And I'm just measuring out the correct weights because it's 2 to 1 by weight. Mixing it up. Mixing it thoroughly. And then what I'm doing is I'm painting the entire surface of uh, the blank with the epoxy resin it's a nice runny epoxy resin and i want it to all soak into the grain and seal up the uh the... now back to an old friend of mine milliput uh it's been a little while since i've done a milliput project and uh this this project i'm doing now kind of evolved in my mind and uh the milliput is a kind of late addition to this project but i think it's really going to give it a different twist and it's pushing milliput another level really to what i've done before um anyone who doesn't know what milliput is it's an epoxy putty two part epoxy putty and you mix the two equal quantities and you knead it for a good five minutes until it's a nice even color no streaks and you then squidge it into your recess in your wood turning and it will produce a perfect inlay uh, the other reason for putting the epoxy resin on the wood first is that it'll help the milliput really form a really strong bond into the grain of the wood. Less chance of it all falling to pieces when I hollow it. Now it's probably not necessary really. The milliput is very sticky in itself, so um, probably not needed uh, the epoxy resin. But I'm a sort of a belt and braces kind of guy, as they say. You know if. Uh, if I can make anything stronger, I will. Anyway, on to the next stage. I mix equal quantities, part A and part B, and uh, knead it really thoroughly for a good five minutes. It can be quite hard work on the fingers and thumbs, especially if you've got a bit of arthritis. So uh, I start by kneading it together, and once I've got it to... Uh, sort of a reasonably well mixed stage i then switch to my roll and fold technique which i roll it into a sausage fold the ends into the middle roll it into a sausage fold the ends into the middle and keep doing this for four or five minutes until it's thoroughly thoroughly mixed i then start the squidging process squashing it all into the recesses making sure there's no voids and note I'm doing this while that epoxy resin is still sticky I've only just put that epoxy resin on I want the two to bond together and, and for the epoxy resin to be pushed into all the little uh, pores and cracks much squidging later and lots and lots of uh, milliput I was having a bit of a panic I wasn't going to have enough anyway that's what I've ended up with but it's very sticky because I've got that other resin going on there so I'm going to wrap some cling film around it now so that I can pack it without it pulling away on my fingers if it was just milliput you can use a very slightly damp finger to do it um, but I'm going to use some cling film I think you call it saran wrap or something in the USA anyway well that's I'm going to try and do that but it might just end up as a sticky mess Well, there it is, all carefully packed. Uh, when packing it, I tend to put a hand, you know, book up it both sides like that so that I'm pressing evenly and that way it's not displacing that ring of milliput across. What I'm trying to do by squidging it all the way round and is to get rid of any voids and it also helps push that, the actual resin up into the grain each side and it's going to, that will bond directly with the milliput because they're both epoxies and it will be very very strong I'm hoping I hope it doesn't all fly to pieces I could end up with a load of uh, very small bangles <laughs> we'll see here we are back on the lathe 
and I'm using my uh, spindle roughing gouge to um, reduce the milliput back down to round because when I place the milliput I actually leave it a fraction proud so we don't get any voids this was actually a couple of days later that I did this because I didn't have time to do it the next day I'm now starting to create a recess within the recess, you know, within the milliput. So we've got a milliput border. And I start by using quite a wide parting tool, so I get a nice even width. And I'll then switch to a narrower parting tool as I deepen the recesses, so that it doesn't bind or build up too much heat. And I'm gradually deeping, deepening those recesses, neatening them up, getting them nice and square, trying to keep that parting tool perpendicular to the tool rest. And there it is, all finished and neat. And I'm just checking the internal measurements for future reference and writing them down. Well, here it is with the grooves cut into the milliput. Um, and I've cleaned it thoroughly, made sure there's no dust or anything. It's very difficult getting rid of the black dust. Uh, I used a compressed air gun and uh, wiped it down with some acetone as well. But uh, that's it, it's all clean. We're then going to put the housing on, which I have cut a slot in to facilitate pouring the resin and to help get it off when it's finished. So you can see that there. And that's the plan. Going to put some cable ties around, seal it up with hot glue. I'm now uh, fixing my mould housing or shuttering uh, by using cable ties. I'm joining three short ties to make one long tie. I didn't have any longer ties. And that just holds that neatly down onto the blank. And I've got my recess at the top so I can pour the resin in. And I'm sealing everything with hot glue. Hot glue is brilliant for mould making. It holds everything instantly and it seals it really nicely. You can get a good bead of that all round. So I spent a bit of time doing that, just making sure it's all sealed. And I then hot glue a piece of wood onto the end, just to stop it rolling around and all the resin pouring out. Now I'm mixing up some more clear top five. And I have to say, this is not what this resin is designed for. And I know I'm going to get bubbles in it. If I pour it in 5mm increments, I won't get bubbles. But it will take me about a week to fill up this mould. Yeah, that's not what this resin is designed for. This is resin abuse. But I had some left, so I thought I'd uh, give it a try. I'm really testing whether this technique works. A couple of days later, we're back on the lathe. I'm just using a parting tool to remove the hot glue. And I'm then breaking away the uh, the plastic sleeve using a screwdriver. And I found it easier to use a parting tool to cut a few grooves in it first. So I'm starting to shape it now using a variety of different tools. Just using a spindle gouge here. And uh, so at this point I thought, that looks like a barrel. So I thought, rather than making a vase, I'll make a barrel shape. Now this is a very sharp spindle gouge, but I'm still getting this break out. And there's quite a difference between the hardness of the wood and the resin and the milliput. And I want to get a nice smooth contour, so I switched to a square nose scraper for this very good way of creating a, a smooth curve and it also decreases breakout dramatically just using the skew to neaten up the end and create a nice rim on the top of the barrel parting tool to get rid of that excess wood and then I start sanding I'm using a rotary sander so that you get a nice flat contour if you just sand it with it going round, you'll find that it'll sand differentially with the different hard areas. Just using a bit of um, CA glue on some of the little cracks in the hope that it might just strengthen it. And then I'm back to the rotary sanding and I sand up to 320. Just getting rid of all the dust. And then some cellulose sanding sealer. And I'll do two coats of this. Just making sure it's all thoroughly coated. 
Then I'm using a bit of chestnut products cut and polish, which I apply stationary, and uh, and then get the lathe spinning, and just buff it, and buff it. It gives a quite a nice finish on the resin. But because I want this to be really clear, I'm switching to uh, burnishing cream now which you also apply with the lathe stationery and then you buff that and just keep buffing it and buffing it and it brings the resin up like glass it's absolutely beautiful and here we go just passing off that little nub on the end and then I start the hollowing first I use Jacob's chuck to drill to depth I've got a tape on the drill there just so I can see when I've reached depth. And then it's over to my uh, Simon Hope Pro hollowing tool. And this was brilliant. It did take a long while and I haven't shown all of it because most of it my head was in the way. But this uh, was very efficient, this little 6mm cutter. Brilliant um, bit of kit. And quickly and efficiently removed all that. And uh, you can see there, I was very pleased with how this looked. Now I'm just doing a few finishing cuts. Now I angle the cutter at quite a steep angle, so you're almost shear scraping with it. And that was the best way to avoid um, chipping out of the uh, resin. And then sanding the inside, which was really difficult. And uh, back to the burnishing cream, re-burnishing the outside slightly as well and doing the inside you can see how clear I'm getting this it's very thin walled now it's a well it's about four millimeters anyway got a nice even wall thickness and here I'm starting to part off it's always a bit nerve-wracking doing this I was debating whether to get the saw out or not but I thought who dares wins there we go just parted it off then I sanded the bottom on the sanding machine and then used my branding iron well it's uh, another project completed and uh, I have to say I'm really pleased with how it went because it really was very experimental and I was pushing uh, things to a new level with the milliput um, as with many projects you sort of work out the best way of doing things at the end really if I do this again and I will do some variations on this I've got several projects planned I would do things slightly differently um, used a lot of milliput doing this uh, and really I think next time I will put cut the grooves fill them with the resin let it set and uh, then shape it and then cut the grooves for the milliput so i'm just using a little bit of milliput each side of the resin when i do it let that set then sand it back flush uh, and do the inside uh, but it's worked uh, that's the main thing it's quite thin walled this it's uh, probably less than four millimeters actually it's nearer three millimeters um, and it's worked really well i don't know what it is it's a barrel shape um, could be a pencil pot or a night light works very well actually with one of these little LED um, tea light things I wouldn't put a, a live you know proper candle in there but these little LED uh, color changing tea lights are fantastic uh, but yeah very pleased with how it held together because I was expecting it to um, fly apart or something but it's actually really solid be better if it was a, a nicer piece of wood um, and it would be a lot better with uh, a vacuum chamber and a pressure pot because this resin is not designed for this and there are lots of little bubbles in the resin which um, limits the finish you're going to get on it and also the translucency as well uh, but in actual fact as you can, I don't know if you can see really uh, I'm trying to show you but it is amazingly clear this sort of window effect uh, see if I can get it to focus 
Uh, there's a few cracks in it and blemishes and defects, but yeah, I'm pleased with it. Really pleased. There's certainly a lot of possibilities again with this idea. To do this sort of work properly, you really need a pressure pot because uh, that pushes the bubbles or squeezes the bubbles so they're so small you're not going to see them. And I am in the process of getting a pressure pot. That is uh, on my to-do list. I have now got a vacuum chamber uh, which will really help as well with projects like this because you can degas the resin before pouring it in you can actually get all the bubbles out but I am, I've got a whole series of videos uh, planned where I'll be using um, the vacuum chamber for different jobs uh, I've got a variety of uh, uses for that but that that's the subjects for upcoming videos um, the other thing is uh, it did highlight a need um, to get some uh, carbide tools and that's something else that I've got coming uh, hopefully next week and that will also be a subject of uh, another video in fact several videos but I shall uh, let you in on all that in upcoming videos bye for now thank you everyone for watching I really appreciate it and thank you very much for all the lovely comments. I do try to reply to everybody. Please like, share and subscribe. It costs nothing to subscribe and you'll be notified of when I put up new videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was very experimental but uh, I think it's an idea of lots of possibilities. And uh, thank you very much again to MBFG for sending me the resin. And always a big thank you to Milliput who have uh, supported me throughout my YouTube career. Don't forget Makers Central, 5th and 6th of May. Uh, get your tickets, details in the description. I'll be back soon with some more videos.